welcome to the 2023 question uh, C2, the structural form question. So the image on the right shows a glamping tent. The projections of a similar glamping tent are shown in figure C2, grouped at the bottom here, so elevation, plan, and end view. A curved surface is produced by translating the generating parabola ABC in a vertical position along the parabolic curve EBD. EBD as shown. So this parabola is projecting along in a vertical position, projecting along here this side, increasing in height and getting smaller and smaller. Okay? Uh, B is the vertex of both the parabola ABC, so our parabola vertex here, and the parabola EBD. So this parabola here is also the vertex. Draw the given elevation of the parabolic curve EBD. So they want us to draw this portion here of the parabolic curve to begin with. Okay, the full parabola would extend downward. So, all right. <clears throat> so just looking at this, we've got a scale that we need to contend with. Okay, so our scale is one is to two hundred. So, um, taking any measurement here, I'll go with the twenty meters. So, twenty meters is equal to centimeters, there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so we'll add two zeros to that, centimeters. In millimeters then, we've got 10 millimeters to a centimeter, so we'll add another zero, millimeters. Okay, and we're going to convert that then, because that's our scale. So it's two zero 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 divided by 200. Cancel out some of these zeros, so 2 into 200 is equal to 100 millimeters. So this length here, when we were to measure it, is going to be 100 millimeters long. Okay, so you can convert to all those measurements. Um, <clears throat> you can do it quick in your head as well if you get into the habit of it. So it's, I like to say, you can divide that by 2 or the, the 20 meters divided by 2 and add a 0. So divided by 2 is 10 and add a 0. So I can do the same here. 16 divided by 2 is 8 and add a 0 is 80. 22 meters is going to be 110 and 111 is going to be at a 0. So move the decimal point in this one. So that would be 6.565 millimeters. Sorry, 55 millimeters. Okay, so we'll draw our parabola using those dimensions. Okay, so it's going to be 80 high, and the B is going to be 110 from, from B. Okay. <coughs> so, let's call that my D, and B is going to be 55 over. Eighty high to B is D. Let's draw the rectangle that will fit into. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, using calculations here, okay, we can see this is, they've given us vertical sections at each one of those points, okay, which is one, two, three, four, five sections along here. That won't divide in, so we'll divide using our uh, construction for dividing along into five equal parts. So finding any angle, we'll step off five equal distances. So Using the compass, one, two, three, four, five. I'll join that last line down. So parallel to that line.
Okay. And then <coughs> I can drop possible and then at each one of those positions. Okay, and I'm going to divide this up into five equal parts. So same thing again. Find any angle. Step up five distances, five equal distances. One, two, three, four, five. Drawing that last one back. And we have a sliding set squares. Join both side ones then up to the vertex. Any points as I go along? Okay, so that's one half of my parabola I'll draw in a moment. <coughs> and now we just want to. Uh, Mirror that across. Now we can see we've got equal sections here again. So I'm going to go out. We've got, actually, let's use my axial symmetry. Yeah, we'll find it for me. So I'll bring these three points out. Give them an axis of symmetry. Mark. Next mark, third one, yeah, going outside the proportion for E. So, three and curve then. Okay, that's found my point E. And three and curve then back from D all to B. Gradual curve, we're looking at the point you're traveling to, not at the point of the thing. Okay, and then <coughs> that, draw the elevation of the travel curve, DVD. So we'll just finish off here by coming across and finding my points C, A. Okay, so that's everything that, they, that we needed here in the first part. Draw the end view of the generating parabola ABC. So they want us to draw this parabola. Okay, so you can come out any distance here, a uh, bit of space between the two views, and it's going to be a parabola 80 high and 100 total width. Okay, so starting over here, it's 100 wide. Uh, find the center of that because we need to find B. Height of B we already have, so let's just drop that across. So there's B. There's A, and here is C. So let's draw that rectangle that it'll fit into. <coughs> okay, and I've already divided this length in five equal sides. I could do the whole construction again. Um, just to save me time, I'm going to make a mark at each one of these. So I've divided that up in five equal parts already. Okay. And this is 50 long, so there's no need to divide it up into five equal parts. One, two, three, four, five. Those back. Oh, and 
on the opposite side then, axial symmetry again. So this is all pretty simple stuff to get us going, easy max to pick up. Junior cert level stuff. Distance, trying to pick up the cross. I know that's going to be actually M, just to speed this up. I know that's going to be 20, so I can just measure 20. Here's going to be 30, so I can measure 30. Okay, don't have to, if you want to just use a compass you can, but never pick up a little shortcut, I would encourage you to. Okay, so there's my Prabla ABC completed in MD. Part C then, project the plan and complete the elevation of the tent. So <clears throat> we need to find uh, this curve really is, is going to be a tricky part. Okay, so we'll find A, C and E to begin with. That's true regular orthographic uh, projection. And then we'll talk about this curve here and how we're going to approach it. B will be straight down. A, C. Straight down. D will be down here. So we have 45 degrees. Okay, so we've got E, so we've got A, got A, and C. And I actually have B here also. B and E both down, and D, that's actually going to be D. So let's draw on this edge here that we have. Okay, <clears throat> so we are looking for this curved surface. Okay. Now, in the question, they tell us that parabola ABC, so this parabola, travels along this curve, okay? So, if you think about it, here, that is the full outline of the parabola, okay? But then, the parabola gets smaller, so I'll look down at a smaller one here. That height, okay? would be the equivalent of a parabola that distance, maybe there. So that would that be that parabola, okay? So that would be the width of the parabola at this point. So this distance and this distance would be the same. So we're going to use those sections that they've given us as a kind of guide. Quite often they, they, they'll have marks on it for one, two, three, four, finding those points. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go with that because we have those positions marked already. So my height, my first height, so that's from the top of my parabola down. Okay, that's the top of the parabola down. Okay, so at this position, Parabola in reality is only that high, not the full height, it's only that high. Okay, and it gets smaller and smaller, so it's going to get smaller and smaller as we go along. So here's our first mark. Okay, and at that point we have our width. So I can take the width here, so let's project this down, actually, all of these down. Okay, so I could get this width right here, and I can step it off there and there. Okay, or I could project it down to 45 degrees. Okay, it's, it's up to you. <clears throat> if you are doing swing the arc, just make it very clear to the examiner that's what you've done. Okay, so now I'm going to project down some of these. 
just to make it clear for you what I've done. Okay, so that's our mark there and there. We're just going to repeat that process then. So my next height, this height here, that distance down from the vertex in that position, and so mark again. Now you can bring that out to the side, find the width, and bring that down and around then to our views. It's probably slightly slower than if you were to uh, if you were to, to swing the arc, but I'll show it to you so it's nice and clear. That's our second point, third height. So it gets a bit repetitive once we've figured out how to do it. That's my height from B. Swing my, extend my distance across, now I've got the width. Bring that down, bring that down. Okay, and final height. Going from the down. It's quite close to the existing distance around there, so we'll see it should be close to that. So and the final point. All right, so <clears throat> now I can draw that freehand curve, that profile. All right, so that is projection of the plan and complete the elevation. So we still need to complete the elevation. So what's missing in the elevation is this portion here. Okay, so <clears throat> it's going to be similar concept to what we just um, looked at, okay? except working in reverse. Okay, so let's get color to highlight it. So let's look at this portion here. Right, so at this position, we still have a, a parabola, okay, and it's this parabola. The height of the parabola is going to be this total height. Okay, so I'm going to, and we've got the width of the parabola is here. So we're going to use those two to solve this. So, <clears throat> the width of my parabola, I can now project back to my elevation, so I'll be able to. Project up a line, let's say up something, just a rough sketch, and that will find me the width, and then that is the height that I'm going to be using, right? And I'll step that off from that lower position, so from this position, okay? Because that's that height of B, so we need to bring it down and up, and B moving down from the lower part. So, working in reverse of what we just did. And let's use those divisions that they've given us, right, which is here and here, which we found earlier. So, here and there. First one. Okay, so that's the height at that point. So from B to that height that I just found. 
I'll go mark from B, I'll go from here. So I'm going right. to bring up my next one. So have a look. 45 degrees. Thirty degrees straight up. I've got another little height. It's a bit small now. Might be able to get out my compass. So that height. I'm going to step that off. Not from B, but from C. Okay, so that's my other point. Now I'll go on my free end curve starting at E. Curving. Like so. Okay, so that is the elevation and plan completed. All right. Then our last part here is they want us to determine the true shape of curve EC. So curve EC is here. So this curve here is what they want us to find the true shape of. All right. Um, so I could rotate that around, that will be one option. So let's imagine rotating here, rotating that section around. Okay, so it's rotating from here around to there. And I could project out the height, so that would be one way. Or <coughs> I can do an auxiliary, so looking out this direction, projecting from plan. So that means I'm creating an auxiliary elevation, so I take my heights from my elevation. So let's let's go with the auxiliary. It might be a little bit quicker. So sliding set squares. Okay, here's my x1, y1. Project out. Point, second point, and finally, after sliding a little bit, <coughs> so my heights now, E, this is the height of E, taken from elevation, or E down, stick it out there. A, or sorry, C is on the ground, so we've got E, that C is on X1, Y1. My height here, then, take that height from elevation, follow it down, and then my final height there, follow it down. Okay, and I can draw my freehand curve. And that is my uh, true shape, excuse me, my true shape of EC. So determine the true shape of EC. All right, so that was the 2023 question C2 structure forms question. Not a bad question there.